Hi, I'm Ernie Zor, and this will be Pure to Spring Software's third in a series of Frequently Asked Questions videos. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of the default file. I'll be using Ohio Guardianship Forms for this demonstration, but every one of our applications has a default file, and it all works in the same and it works the same way in all of them. So no matter which application of ours you have, it's got a default file. Also, before I start, I'm going to note that the ghost prompt suggestions are turned on automatically, and I'm going to turn them off so that you can better see the contents of the default file. Now the default file is an application data file just like any client file that you might create. It's an empty file though and it's blank for every field on every form in the application. So in the case of Ohio Guardianship Forms, that means that there are just short of about a hundred pages of forms that contain literally thousands of blank fields. What's unique about the default file is that every time you start the application or use the new command, the application loads the default file then it disconnects leaving you with a blank untitled file that you will complete and save with the name you give it now i just i just started ohio guardianship forms and you can see here up on the title bar that the file has no name yet it says untitled.gd6 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the i'm going to open the default file and while i say a few words about the default file and its purpose i'll begin making some entries in the default file just to save time now ultimately the purpose of the default file is to save you time and it does that by allowing you to prime it with answers that don't change from one client to the next that way every time you start a new file you don't have to retype the basic information that never changes you can usually find examples of those types of fields on the general information worksheet which we're looking at right now examples would be the county name another example might be the judge's name and I'm, I'm scrolling down here now and you can see that uh, it would be pretty typical to f default the attorney's name address phone number and Supreme Court registration number uh, now perhaps most of the guardianships you handle are not limited and are of person and estate well you can check the appropriate check boxes and, and even if you say to yourself well not all the ones that I handle are of that type well notice I said most of the guardianships I said most because you can always change the default value if it doesn't apply to a particular client a good rule of thumb that I use is that if a default field value applies more than 50 percent of the time I might as well make it a default because at least it's going to be correct most of the time and for those fewer times that it doesn't apply it can always be changed well so much for the explanation how is it done well first you open the default file which I've already done second you enter the unchanging values which I've also begun doing and in that context note that it's not just the general information worksheet you can scan through all the forms in an application to see what other fields could be defaulted um, let's take a look for example at form 16.1 I'm going to get it up on the screen here and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. Now, in real situations, you may not know exactly when a client is going to come in and sign the affidavit. Therefore, you can place underlying characters in the date fields so that it can be printed and then dated by hand when it's notarized. Here I'll put underlines in the day and month fields. Now, there are plenty of other examples and I don't think you'll have a hard time coming up with them so that was the second step and the last step in the process is to simply press the save button and then get the heck out of the file because if you if you forget yourself and start completing other fields they'll become defaults too and that's not terribly uh, uh, bad but um, if you can avoid it you want to avoid it so you don't have to undo it later incidentally watch how I get out of the default file and test my defaults at the same time right now notice that the file name default.gd6 is on the title bar if I press the new button I'll not only get out of the default file but I'll load its values as well how do I know it loaded well because you can see the name changed on the title bar and all the default files are completed I, I, I meant to say all the default fields are completed in my otherwise blank file can this really save time well one user of our bankruptcy application said she defaulted enough fields that she estimated that it saved her about an hour of preparation time on each petition those hours add up and um, 
since we're trying to keep all of our frequently asked question videos under five minutes, I am out of time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And until the next time, take care.